It's that time again for EverQuest Next Into the Portal. Your hosts for this evening are... Geek Domo. Lock Six Time. And Trend Day. Let's get to the show right about now. Hello, everybody. Bonjour, ça va. All right, this is our EverQuest Next Into the Portal Halloween special. As you see, I spent a long time setting up my costume. I'm mm. I'm an adventurer. <laughs> I spent, Locke, what are you? I, I spent 30 years working on the docks and another, another 40 as a lumberjack. <laughs> I'm I'm not in costume. Yes, you are. Oh, I'm 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 Jack Nicholson from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, or ah. Marlon Brando from On the Waterfront. Mhm, mhm. And Trendane, <laughs> you are. Oh, it's just me. No, I thought but you were Omid yeah. with his new hair. Yes, yeah, that's right. I am. I'm Omid with my new not. hairdo. <laughs> I felt left out, and I I needed to get my hair did. I need to get my hair did. So this is what I got done. I was going for kind of a Beyonce kind of look with sort of a Monique shape. Um, so that that's what this is. You're fabulous, absolutely I fabulous. I know. <laughs> so hey, everybody, welcome to Into the Portal and EverQuest Next discussion, where we are going to talk EverQuest Next and throw out random wild speculation theory and have no basis in fact whatsoever. <laughs> Sometimes See if you can just, guess which is Sometimes we just say words one after the other and hope that they mean something. And sometimes they do. Like sometimes. sometimes. Throw, a, throw a bunch of monkeys in a room and, and they'll type out Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. What happened to Zaphos? Well, uh, what's our weekly update for Zaphos this week? What happened with him this week? Last week he was getting plastic surgery, breast augmentation. and uh, This week he's um, throwing monkeys into a room full of typewriters. Mm -hmm. And trying to uh. find Shakespeare. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, that's how we got the topics for this week's episode. It is, and which unfortunately it usually ends up just being a room full of monkey poo stuck to the wall. But stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think I've had to I think I've had to proofread a couple of those things too. Exactly. So no Zaphos this week. Howdy everybody. Thanks a lot for coming. Uh, a little bit of our normal show stuff. If you want to ask us a question that you think we might answer, just Type it out in the chat window in brackets. So you put question, the word question in those brackets, and then our moderator, Meka, will grab them up and put them into our chat over here. And uh, we'll be able to answer the questions in our Q&A session at the end. One more thing I have to put out is that we have some secret information for you at the end of the show, so stay tuned. It or it could be with, in the middle. Or it could be in the middle. You don't know where it is. It deals with EverQuest Next Landmark. <gasps> Absolutely. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Absolutely. <laughs> Can we even ask any more questions this time? No, you can't ask these questions yet. All right. So let's get started. <laughs> All right. First topic of the night. Dun, dun, dun. Omid and Pentopod's cruelty. So vicious. So does, who wants so to start vicious. off what happened? I actually, actually, Just I guess I can start off with what happened. Uh, on Twitter, I put out that our show was going to be last night, accidentally. I said it would be on the 24th. And then I believe, Locke, did you put out that it was going to actually be on the 25th? Yes, I, I confirmed after uh, after Pentapod uh, <laughs> asked whether it was 24th or 25th. Right, so Pentapod asked, is it 24th or 25th? Locke says, it is actually the 25th. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Mia culpa, so I st stabbed myself with a sword. And I thought it was over. But then Omid decided to write back. What did he say, Locke? He said, it's okay. I'll just play some landmark instead. Bastard. That bastard. It's the sadistic cruelty of the man. He's drunk with power. He must be stopped. He must be. He's first <laughs> off, he's, he's throwing around that he's playing with Beta, and then 
He gets a haircut. Where is he going to stop? Where does this all end? Beautiful bastard. Yeah. He's going to wind up questing for the blazer of power. Ooh. And then there will be no stopping him. <laughs> we have we have to stop him. All right, so then we have to stop our maid. Is after we any... said to him, "You're a cruel bastard." He then sent us a picture of Pentapod giving us her landmark face. <laughs> yeah, he said he said he was going to put out uh, new landmark pictures, but instead he corrupted corrupted poor Pentapod into his evil schemes. So this is landmark face. I, I don't know. That's landmark face. Because you could read so much into that. It could be extraordinarily awesome, or she could have found the biggest show-stopping bug ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Let's inspect her desk. First off, she has an iPad, <laughs> and she's got a a TARDIS model with a blue something or other on top. I think mm-hmm. it's an octopus. It could be an octopus, and she drinks tea. Apparently. Yeah. Mm. So this is this it's, it's very <laughs> big clues to what is going on over there in the black box. This is exclusive coverage you're getting right now, folks. And if you look, <laughs> her pen is over there. I'll bet she's a southpaw. She l- might be a southpaw because there's uh-huh. where the iPod is sitting, or the iPad. She's got orange stickies over there. Check out the Sherlock on Trendine. Mm. Mm. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, God, get off. oh, you mean, okay, all right. A little bit. Sherlock all over me. <laughs> oh, Benedict. Oh. All right, let's see. Uh, yes, hurry, move on. We need I... to be a little bit louder. <laughs> First, see the 100 foot statue to Omid that Omid had his minions build. <laughs> so the thing. He's yeah. drunk with power. <laughs> That's not what the emergent AI is for. Worship me. That's what he programmed them to do. <laughs> uh, my, Midian uh, said that wouldn't the mouse be on the left? Well, she could be ambidextrous. Mm. Well, uh, I mean, she's she's twice as sugary, right? If she's ambidextrous. I think so. ambidextrous. It's hard, it's hard to to get decent left-handed mice, though, isn't it? And then my uh, my lady friend person uh, is left-handed. It uses a right-handed mouse. This is a <laughs> ambidextrous mouse. Oh, you got the razor one. The new yeah. Naga's got a left-handed version as well, actually. Hasn't I'm it? not left-handed, but I'm a claw gamer, so I can't grab it on the. I can't. Golly, ma. Okay, Be we're ma. digressing really bad. Okay, so on yeah. to the real topics. Let's let's move on to a real topic, shall we? Hmm. New roundtable response and question. Oh, thank you for joining us, Omid. Good timing. Oh, Omid's here now. <laughs> Yes, he's here. He missed out on the whole Omid's yeah, well, that's evil what, that's plot. That's for being late. His ears must have been burning. <laughs> Something. I was going to say, we should save it, but I didn't want to be all arrogant. Anyway, so roundtable response. Omid yeah. can find out uh, what that was all about in his own time. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. Uh, oh, he says he heard everything we said. <laughs> sure. sure. Omid, I didn't mean it. Don't listen to them. He made me it say comes, all this stuff. Up on it your comes side. to backpedaling. I meant every word. <laughs> My gorgeous hair. Shh, shh, shh. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is a meat hair. All right. So, what was the roundtable response in question? Round, roundtable response. It was about um, public versus private building. Public versus private building. And I think uh, their their roundtable responses are really getting good. I mean, they're more clear clear now with what they're trying to to say. Mm-hmm. Um. And I, I think they did a good job explaining the, the the different sides of the issue because you have some people that want to show off what they're doing and you have other people that want to sell what they're going to be selling and they don't want people to see how they're building that particular cathedral or whatever it is they're building. Mm-hmm. It did a, it definitely clarified a lot of stuff for me. I, th- I think it's great to see the, the sort of refinement process of these uh, roundtable responses because... You know, people got annoyed with a few bits and pieces in the past, and you know, it's it's a learning experience uh, for them. Uh, but I think they've really got a handle now on like uh, how and the way that they phrase things to be able to sort of gently massage them into the collective consciousness of the players, 
without getting a sky is falling situation. This most recent one as well, I, I thought was particularly good because they said at the end, you know, because of the discussion that has come from this, I think it was Terry Michaels that said, you know, the, they always had a plan to have a private building structure in place, but it's actually moved up the priority list mm -hmm. um, yeah. for Landmark. And I think, you know, that's, a, that's you know, a, a, major, a major point of development in Landmark that's been altered by conversation that only, that only came about because of, because of these roundtable videos. Like, without that question, it's very unlikely, I think, that people would have, you know, really rallied around a question like that on the forums and really got involved and stuck into the question of, you know, oh, I'm, I really want private building. I really want, you know, you can't, you know, maybe lack of the holy trinity you'll get like you know 30 pages on a on a forum but you know private building and landmark probably wouldn't have otherwise and very different answers like on the irc chat you know very mm -hmm. very are you actually over there trending i haven't been on the irc chat. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> irc so 90s oh god oh my god <laughs> so can you internet. imagine can you imagine <laughs> trending on the, uh, the irc oh. scant scandal it would be people are, are talking about our outfits we are this is our halloween special because next friday it will be the first so we're not actually going to be able to do our halloween show next week oh my so this god is our, rent will be due yeah this is our halloween extravaganza look at our amazing costumes we have on tonight look how spooky everything is yes woo spooky we, we, we decided that spooky was, was the trend Dane is uh, very spooky mm. so <laughs> Spooky. Oh, but see, Georgeson's Halloween party is in the second. As as Omid once again showing his cruelty, wants to mention <laughs> that he's going to be at a party with Dave Georgeson. Right. And were we weren't invited. We we you not invited. To no, I did not get that invite. You know, I'm closer than both of you. Yeah, Trent Dane lives right get... up the street. Uh, Sony is sending a jet for me. Did they oh. not? Oh. Did the not, Sony Jet that, do that for you? No. Mm -hmm. You know, before before we started shooting the episode, we were doing all the the whole Kalima Shock <laughs> you know, thing. And what you don't realize, Locke, is that they also were doing the same thing from the beginning of Temple of Doom. You will be riding on a cargo full of live poultry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that'd be amazing. Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. Oh, right oh. Can I have Can I have short round with me? No. Oh, no, 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 that kid ruined no. the movie. The whole comic relief, he was terrible. Sorry. Oh, it's amazing. My it, name is Short Round. Uh, forget you guys. The it's best part was different generation. the ceiling was coming down. That was his best No, scene. no, no. The first and the third are the only Indiana Jones movies. The, the second one, Temple of Doom, didn't exist. Wow, purist. I, I yeah. presume you feel the same way about the fourth one. It doesn't exist either. When he flew through the <laughs> air doesn't in... He doesn't even acknowledge the book. <laughs> there are the, odd numbers even that... Even the it. list of Indiana Jones films that he acknowledges, he doesn't even add number four. Ed, Edward, Edward drifting again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the question, the new question on EverQuest Next uh, website was, day or night, what do we think? Pretty oh, much. I've got I've got things. Let let me break out my I do hickey. Now I, I I actually I like this question. Uh, whoever's writing I'm, the questions, kudos. It was a very good, very well worded question. So definitely awesome on that. Omid, you can give that person a big hug. Uh, and they did a great job uh, with the question. And I I think the the it's it's pretty conclusive, right? Lock. Who? What's the score right now? The score right now is it's uh, it's a bit of a landslide at the moment. I was uh, I was surprised and very pleased to see that the majority, a eh? because it is a majority because it's not a, it's not a plurality, which is a word that I learned recently. <laughs> but it is, a, it is a majority of people say that they want they want the the night time to be you know almost a different world state they Deadly. want the fact that it's, they want the fact that it's nighttime to ref, you know to have an extra element of danger or a, a, a slightly different feel zombies, to it zombies uh, ghosts just, oh, just, just that's just wonderful like, there's so many there's so many ways to interpret that and so many different things you can do with it but i i just think it's great that the community are really getting behind really rallying behind <laughs> i'm going to keep using the word rally really rallying behind the idea of um 
you know, just creating a world, having a world that makes sense and having that world is where you play. You know, you don't you don't exist in a in a persistent environment, you know, while you're in a queue for a group finder, you know, to do theme park <laughs> content. It's like, you know, you actually the the way that the world operates around you is, you know, an important factor in the game and I think that's I think that's absolutely fantastic. So Big thumbs up to everyone who who chose the correct response mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. in this roundtable. What do you think there, Chen Dane? Well, I have a couple of things. Uh, one, I, too, voted for the, you know, you're damn right that nighttime should be dangerous as all hell. Um, but I, you know, it also made me wonder, I mean, I know that the land is, is procedurally generated as you move out, but does it ever form a globe? No, it's Discworld. We talked about this. Mm. It's riding okay. on the back of uh, a turtle that has five elephants that are holding up. Four elephants that are holding up. The fifth one fell off and turned into salt. Or, or no, no, treacle. It was a treacle mine. Yeah. The treacle mines. Yeah. Um, so but there's a there's a, a day night cycle in uh, in Discworld, isn't there? Because mm-hmm. light moves slowly. So as the as the sun goes over the top of the disc world, the light lags behind it and moves mm-hmm. across the disc. So I think what Trendane is getting at is: is it going to be day in one part of the world and night in another part of the world? Trendane. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what that was exactly what I was going to ask. Was you know, will <laughs> will there be like if if you were on this planet and you were on one side it was daytime, then on the other side it would be night and yada yada. As you, tra- I mean, I know we don't have fast travel, but well, kind of, <laughs> yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> thought of have fast travel. Can we um, have clacks? Oh, clacks would be amazing. I think I think they have a cream for that. Mm, and, uh, oh, Pentapod just showed up, so I have to show Pentapod her picture. I, I think she, <laughs> I think she sure knows what her... <laughs> <laughs> didn't, she, didn't she tweet it? Right. That's I the stole it. I put it up on the... It's, it's up there now. <laughs> but now we can ask the really pertinent question. Oh, what kind of tea was she drinking? No, Southpaw or not. Oh, That's what yeah. everybody wants to know. Oh, yeah. Are you a Southpaw? Because we notice you have a uh, pen on your left side mm. and a iPad on the left side and a tea on the left side next to your TARDIS refrigerator. I'm guessing that's a TARDIS refrigerator. It holds one beer. <laughs> one beer. <laughs> it's a really <laughs> thick she beer. she pours into a teacup. Mm-hmm. Can- Carefully, so as not to spill any on the iPad, and then then she plays Landmark. Yes, that is the TARDIS refrigerator. It has been confirmed. <laughs> TARDIS fridge is confirmed for <laughs> Landmark. That's all we really are talking about, everybody. We, for this game thing that we were just <laughs> right. It's, it's <laughs> can that be the title of the show, please? Yeah, TARDIS oh, refrigerator. God. I don't know why that tickled me so much. Six. Six hundred thousand times as much, you know, moldy college food left in the back of it somewhere. <laughs> um, so the other thing was, uh, somebody had asked, um, uh, you know, are are there animals that are nocturnal? You know, are there? Raccoons? And I was thinking, oh, yeah, that sort of thing, or you know, animals that only come out to hunt at night, like during the day they're in a cave. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like at night you go into the cave to seek shelter, and the cave is empty because whatever lives in there is out hunting, but when it comes daytime and they come back and you know somebody's sleeping in my bed and we have a goldilocks and the three really really hungry cougars who had a really shitty night of hunting um there you are laid out like a buffet and it's awesome but the other thing was um i'm really actually i want to see the response to this because i'm curious to see what they're going to say like what kind of monsters or anything that could be coming out at night because that could change the game completely Mm-hmm. Well, there's there's so many things you could do with it. I mean, not not just animals coming out of caves, which hopefully is doable with the with the AI system. But you know, things uh, coming up from underground might be another one. Or you mm-hmm. know, <clears throat> vampires coming out of coffins could be one. If you're if you're going to make the night more dangerous, you know, perhaps some kind of lunar cycle could could be included. Maybe I'm taking it too far now, but oh, you want to take it too far. That, just everything with it. <laughs> we could never go too far. Never go. Well, too no. Far. Here's here's how I take it too far. Um, I what I, the note that I have written is day and night cycles, weather, fishing, time of day, and temperature. Because if you're fishing, the time of day that you go fishing, you know you're going to you know, different fish might not be biting in the afternoon that there are in the morning, and also with the weather. Are we reading into this too much that they might have emergent AI on fish? Maybe. They're, they could be very dangerous. Fish. 
They could nibble your feet. You know, if you if you take it as a as a sort of gathering thing, you know, if if like animals could have AI, then you know why couldn't why couldn't fish have AI? Why couldn't they prefer to be in a certain in a certain part of a stream or you know? In a, they only in, prefer bread or worms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why why not? Maybe maybe they're maybe they're attracted to different food sources. <laughs> maybe we, you know. Um. Maybe and then, of course, after it rains, fishing is always terrible right after it rains. Um, mm -hmm. See, animals varying from day to night, nocturnal animals sleeping in caves during the day, flowers that only bloom at certain times of the day. So your, your herb harvesting changes. Like, you know, you wouldn't even know that that plant is there because it only blooms in the morning, like morning glory. It only opens up during the day and it closes at night, so you wouldn't see it. Um, you might be asking too much for, for this game. Oh, way to show some confidence in the people that are making the game we want to play so badly. We're definitely going into speculation. I say I'm I'm not sure about that actually because that's kind of um, that's that seems to me the type of thing that if someone was a herbalist, they'd go uh, they'd go and look up on the wiki what time of day mm -hmm. the flower that they particularly wanted would would bloom, and you know then <clears throat> they'd just they'd grind for that and complain that they couldn't do it all day because that's that's what players do, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, for me, I would like it. <laughs> See, that, that, that's I where like companies like EA don't really like me interacting with the, with the player base very much because I tell them <laughs> shut the fuck up. You know, I'm like shut up. You know, shut up. I, what you want is you want a button that you push and you are level eighty five and you've got all the gear. You, you don't want to grind for anything. Okay, so um, yeah, that was. My point for that. Excellent. You Thank you. You may <laughs> yes, go in peace. Yeah, uh, people are saying that players complain that games are too hard. Well, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's it, it would be something that was too hard. It would just be something that you know the the spreadsheet or the database or whatever would you know it'd be up it'd be up online available to view you know within a week of the game coming out. You know, smart people would work that out, and then it'd become it had become a real sort of chore type of thing, in my opinion. Like, in you know, rather than making it feel like the world was more alive, it had turned into players. Players themselves would turn it into a grinding exercise. Mm -hmm. I I think like a, a system like that, you know. Whereas whereas you know, if it was something like we're, you know, uh, Trendon was talking about fishing, you know, like after rain and things. If the rain occurred at random times, or you know, if there was a weather system that dictated when the rain would happen, then I think that would be cool because it it adds it adds variety and it adds possibility space to the world. Whereas if it's like a regular clockwork thing, then you every know, day at noon on Tuesday it always rains. Ex exactly, yeah, it's like you know, players will optimize towards boredom, and if there's something that can be measured, then players will find a way to you know find the best way to do it and you know the I most totally the totally tedious, grindy way <laughs> one i want to see weather random weather effects yeah and i want to see seasons i think those two things together with a day night cycle would be important and i've, I've got something else for weather but i'll well, save it for the q a section well you can you can say now we're on the topic it's okay well we're kind of on the topic we're talking <laughs> about day and night cycle not weather okay <laughs> all right let's move on then to our next topic Pre-beta warm-up. Okay, everybody. This is where you do your calisthenics while you're waiting for the beta to kick off. That's, you do this that with your wrists. Fat some bitches like me can lose weight. <laughs> and, and you must get up every four hours and move. <laughs> okay, no, pre-beta warm-up. What we're talking about is that uh, you have to get your stuff ready because beta is coming. Just yeah. like winter. Get your affairs in order. Get your affairs in order. Make sure that your pass that you uh, do not have um, EverQuest Next blocked or going into your trash can or your spam folder, because that will be the time the beta key comes through. That always happens that way. <laughs> I bet get, that's where my invitation to that damn party went. Get your affairs in order is right. Make sure you tell your boss I will not be in for the next two months. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure your wife is okay with feeding the children. Why you have an IV hooked up to you and adult diapers? I was going to say catheter, but okay. It'll be, catheter. It'll be fine. I'll just I'll just do player studio full time. Yeah, I'll <laughs> make a living selling thing. bricks, like just like bricks. Uh, uh, the best bricks. 
But uh, yeah, so this is this is coming obviously from a tweet by Dick Seller saying, you know, get your affairs in order, make sure make sure you're signed up, uh, make sure emails are coming through. Uh, you know, we we know that another landmark video is is coming up soon because the this the photo of Terry Michaels, Dave Georgeson put up making making another video. Uh, we know that a lot more landmark information is probably going to be dropping in the next in the next two or three weeks, and winter is coming. So, if we add up all if we add up all those things together, it means that Pentapod is left-handed, and, and she, she has a TARDIS, and she keeps beer <laughs> in her TARDIS fridge. <laughs> That's uh, what's right now. Yeah, it's it's looking more and more that we're going to have some beta pretty soon. So. Dwarven, dwarven beer, very short, very thick, very stout beer. Yes, stout especially. One good word for it. Uh, oh, Amid says he's. They're going to have another dev diary out next week. Not one hundred percent sure, but I think we'll make it. Cool. I like those um, dev diaries. They're really good. Um. Oh, I guess my other question was for Omid because you know you you mentioned the thing in the newsletter and I was not sure which newsletter you meant I presume that because I looked in my email box and I didn't see a copy so I thought now he's made it just the internal newsletter and I don't get to see it or anything oh my god what am I supposed to do let's, let's move on to another topic before I keep talking like that forever Omid just said we're going to like them a lot more when they have gameplay footage in them that is an understatement beyond understatements the entire reason I started doing EverQuest Next into the portal was there was nothing else to show in my videos. I did 28 videos with the same uh, footage. Um, it's just, it's just Omid reveling in, in his new evil persona. Back to the topic at hand. Number one, Omid and Pentapod's cruelty. Back to your evil wizard's tower oh, that I assume you have. I'm shaking my fist. Get the heads. Yes. So, so yeah. Hopefully, we'll get some new footage. That would be fantastic. And then every single person who makes YouTube videos is going to use that same footage about 400 <laughs> times. Look here. I and in don't. the, in the just, corner of every one I'll of those... I'll just sit here and talk. I'm, in every one of those videos, though, <laughs> from now on, I'm going to put a little TARDIS refrigerator in the corner. <laughs> yeah. As a, as a little... Is an and Easter there'll, egg. Be, there'll be links through time and space mm. so can... to a, a realm of eternal fresh beer. <sighs> Ooh. Next. Omid Next. Is, now Omid's <sighs> picking on my my my. Did I? Oh yes. Use use be. your words. <laughs> my my words. Right, just breathe. Just I, breathe. I forgot the the height the apostrophe yes. Ah. <sighs> Oh, thank you, thank you. Pale ale for the win. No, oh, I mean, he's leaving yes, for a few minutes. Good. good. Now we can go back to talking about him. Pale ales are good. I like um, autumn nut brown ales, especially right now. One of my favorites right now is Sierra Nevada Tumbler. Perfect for adding to chili and drinking with chili. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. Where is your beer tonight, Trendane? I don't have any. It's horrible. No. I'm I'm a lady of class. I drink mm. tea. <laughs> I'm drinking you should, uh, water. You should try the, the Goose Island IPA if you haven't already. It's a, mm. it's a phenomenal specimen, so it is. All right, so I guess we're done with that. Next topic. Oh, before we keep going, everybody, uh, make sure you write question like some people are doing in there. Write the question in the parentheses, and then we're going to have uh, Meka is grabbing the questions and sticking them over here in your chat so we can read them. They need to convert me to the ways of tea. I'm a tea drinker. I like tea. Earl Grey. Just because. I'm a Trekkie. Alright, next, to next topic. Patrick Stewart has, damn it. Yeah, yeah Patrick Stewart r raised the amount of Earl Grey tea being sold throughout the world. The EQ Nexus Extra Life Marathon. So everybody who uh, is here tonight, remember that coming up on November 2nd, there's going to be an Extra Life Marathon. And what is Extra Life? Well, basically, um, everybody who is going to be on the particular team for uh, EQ Nexus will be playing a video game of some sort, and uh, they're going to play it for 24 hours. 
and you can pledge or you can watch on Twitch and you can join in with the fun and revelry and donate some money. The money doesn't go to the person streaming. <laughs> It goes to uh, children, and the people that are playing pick the children's hospital that the money will be going to, and the money goes directly from you to the children's hospital. So, I, I was laughing about um, Ladian's question of will they be playing Landmark? No. <laughs> oh yeah, see, Omid forgot yeah. to mention that that he, they're going to be giving us all beta keys so that we can do the live stream with beta. Oh yes, twenty-four hours. You get a beta key. You, you get, get a beta key. Everybody gets a beta key. No. Stay tuned to the end for a special announcement. I might just play EverQuest 1 just to show the, the, the beauty of the old game. You know what? I was thinking about that. So I've, I've never I've never played the original EverQuest. Ever, ever, ever. If so you want was... to play it like the original, and, and everybody who works for Sony right now, hold your ears, uh, there <laughs> is uh, Project 1999. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, you, can, you can play that. And it, it's exactly the way the game came out when it first came out. With, I think, uh, Shadows of Luckland expansion. Either you also have What's to run a second box with View EQ running so that you can see where all the mobs are. And <laughs> None of that stuff is there. It's the old, it's the Shadow of Luckland interface on the old EverQuest. Before, yeah, before the... Uh, and Get Lost, yes. And I played it once. <laughs> For about 45 minutes, I was stuck inside of Nariak. So, you know, I just I thought you know what what better opportunity to uh, to bust my EverQuest cherry. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it'll be good. Could be, could be. <laughs> Everybody the- go on go on to now. Is that a, I assume that's a server. Yeah, <laughs> I know nothing about it. I'll be there going. So WASD to move. Yeah, I got this. I got it. Where the, where the PvP at? <laughs> the funny the funny part was <laughs> when I was doing. That? I was doing the auto attack. You know, you, you set it up to attack and you sort of sit back like this and let it go. I'm so used to like actually doing something like hitting keys and casting spells. I hit it, I just set it to hit with my dagger and the guy's like <laughs> over and over again. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so um everybody go over to eqnexus.com and um check out their extra life marathon. It's going to be on uh November 2nd, I believe. Double check real quick. And um, yeah, all the money goes I, to. I think I have nothing better to do with your money. Yeah, I mean it's not. A, you can donate like one dollar if you really wanted to, and it, that money goes to a kids' hospital, so it it's really worth it. And um, I believe they even use it for they use it for for research, but they also do buy the kids toys sometimes. Like that's that's uh that's another one. That's child's play. Sorry, child's play. Mm-hmm. They take the money and they put it into. Uh, buying the kids gaming consoles that they can take home with them when they're out of the hospital. That's pretty cool. All right, so we're going on to Q&A time. Q&A time. Q&A time. So here we are. It is Q&A time. Okay, so... Oh, wow, we have quite a few questions. I didn't realize there's this many questions already. Sweet. All right, so first one from Coin and Cleavage. Love the name. It, it the image that goes in my head just even saying the name is just amazing. <laughs> boop. Yep. Boop, boop. Uh, unless life. it's brass, and then it's like an entire you know manhole cover with a <laughs> coin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Quentin Cleavage says, "Where can I get myself some voxel potpourri? <laughs> I heard it smells like victory." Uh. Um, Potpourri. Yeah, I, I totally mispronounced yes. that. Potpourri. <laughs> Coin and cleavage. Coin and cleavage asked me. Uh, asked me what voxel potpourri smells like, and it smells like uh, victory times victory times victory. Mm. Is like a, a hilarious. Cubic victory. Which is hilarious. It is a cubed victory. But let me ask. You, but it, you're not voxel potpourri. You're the voxel. It's voxel populi. Populi. Because Latin-based puns are also hilarious. Okay, so I had never heard that pun before until I saw your show. I never looked it up, but then now I see it everywhere. I'm, I'm looking all over the place, and it's everywhere. And where did Vox that come from? Voxel populi, isn't it? Vox populi. Voxel populi. No. Voxel Vox. populi smells like victory cubed. Victory times victory cubed. See, vox populi is Sean Astin's show. Um, so. Oh. So, yeah, if you follow him on Twitter, you'll see him talking about Vox Populi. Okay, so what is it? Okay, uh, what so is Vox Populi? Term, Vox Populi. Yeah, what is it? 
I, that's what I'm asking. I'm, I'm literally asking you. But a it's a uh, it's a Latin phrase that means the the opinion of the man on the street. Like, oh, yeah. So you're what? the you're the opinion of the cube on the street. Yes. Very nice. Because because voxels. Hmm. I so like yeah. that. I like Mystic the tie-in. There's a great tie-in right there. If anyone was wondering. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any? Uh, there's there's nothing for you to answer. There is there, Trendane? Because well, you could speak, no, but go ahead. I was just. I mean, my weather question does involve voxels, but we'll just. Well, uh -huh. we'll, we'll get to that. We we have lots of questions. Oh yes, I know. Cool. All right, Gor Gordinak. Why am I the one asking these questions? I mean, I can't read. <laughs> okay. He's so good at it. We claim plots in the overworld. Will we be able to claim plots in one of the lower tiers? I like the overworld word. It's a good word. Oh, well, it's a good word. Okay, so let me just say this is an opinion. Uh, I'll answer this one first. Uh, I you, Minecraft. There's a mod that you can get if you play in a public server, which allows you to claim a square spot. But it's also a cube. You claim all the way to the infinity in the sky and all the way to the infinity down below. Of That's your claim. And I'm hoping they'll do the same kind of thing with this. Is Omid or Pentapod still around? Maybe they can clarify. <sighs> I think they've gone to meetings. I think the the last official response I heard about this was that they they want us to be able to claim underground, but because of the way the procedural generation, because they they want the underground spaces to be uh, quite sort of mutable areas where, you know, they're, but they're constantly what if you could dig a hole generated. So, but you could dig a hole into somebody's floor, and then yeah. all, they, all their stuff falls. Well, that won't be possible unless unless you allow them to. But in terms of actually being able to build things, to build permanent structures underground, they're still they're still working on the tech. I think so. Maybe you know, maybe uh, give give Stephen Klug a tweet and see how he's getting on with that. Hmm. I, I would kind of hope it would be completely all the way to the, the infinity below. I hope so. But I think in, it opens up so much, doesn't it? You know, if, if they want us to be spending a lot of time underground and we can't build anything in Landmark Underground, I think that, you know, that would be mildly disappointing to me. Yeah. Go ahead, Dear Dane. Well, I was going to say, in, in legal parlance, if I remember correctly, um, well, like if you buy a house, unless you purchase the mineral rights to the land that house is on, you don't own what's underneath the foundation. But if you right. own the mineral rights, then you you do everything under it belongs to you as well. So similar sort of thing, I think. Yeah. Mm. Good point. Uh, Dig says I'm not sure about infinity below. I think it's at least one tier. One tier is good enough. I mean, as long as they just can't build something below you. Like, what if they build up something all the way to the bottom, and then they put bombs on top of it, and they blow up your place or put baby dragons well, that, in your that won't affect with it unless unless you give them permission to alter what's on your plot no no one else can affect anything that you this is a problem and, and this is something we probably and this is part of this same whole issue if you have a plot and it's a square plot and it's just we'll just say it's one acre okay there is mm -hmm. nothing that says that the person is right next to you can't dig a hole <laughs> and block you from entering that your plot from that side like they could dig literally dig some big canyon and if you got enough people together they could cut you off completely i mean if you had four accounts or six accounts you'd need right to cover every plot around that plot you could literally carve this big huge crater into the ground and you would block people from being able to get to their own land that's brilliant <laughs> i mean grief griefing comes to a new because the reason I, I say that is i saw a video once where this guy had that thing in minecraft where he could protect his house all the way to the sky and all the way below right and this yeah. guy planted lava all the way around his house in all, you know, and the entire area around it was covered in lava. Yeah. <laughs> where it didn't destroy the house, but it made it completely impractical to live there. Well, I mean, that's that's assuming that the plots will fit together edge to edge. Mm hmm You know, that's that's one thing. Um, if they if they didn't fit edge to edge, then you could build a massive trench. But then, you know, whoever was doing it could just build a, a bridge over the top, presumably. Or you know, use use one of the adventurers' movement skills to to get over the top. They're going to need but. to hire, and, and Happy Hands will just said they're going to need a zoning commission to set <laughs> <Yeah>. up <laughs> right of way and driveways and parkways and 
Well, I mean, ho- hopefully the uh, hopefully the the worlds and the areas we'll have will be big enough because I know like if you don't like where you are, you can just pick up your flag and move on. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, if if the if the plots aren't flush against each other, then you know hopefully there'll be enough room in between to to stop people doing that. So Omid just said something in chat. I didn't see it. Everyone's saying thanks. Did he confirm something. I didn't see it. Uh, okay. Still working on the system. Beta will help finalize, but there's going to be space between plots. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know why my Twitch Twitter <laughs> my Twitch chat is acting all flaggy. It's probably Omid's fault. <laughs> Could be. Or to his credit. To his credit. Depending all on right. if he wants the credit or the blame. I don't know. All right. Legendary Neurotoxin asks: Froglock legs can be harvested for food. Cannibalism if frog legs eat it. Can humans be legs be harvested for raton, Ratonga dinner? Um, this is a que- this is a, something I've always wanted to do. I mean, if you can skin a deer in a game, could you not skin an ogre? Yeah, uh, I think that'd be incredible. Uh, you know, I think it's definitely something that could be implemented as long as there were repercussions to it. Making you know, a, a nice I mean, armor you're... suit out of ogre skin. Yeah, like if you if you made an ogre skin suit and then tried to walk into an ogre camp, that's probably not something. <laughs> not something that they'd be happy about. Bob, like, what happened to you? You look so weird. <laughs> Mom. <Surprise>! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who knows? That? <laughs> I don't know. I, I I think that they should allow you to uh, to skin humanoid races, but. Mm-hmm. I guess Especially you have to draw a line if somewhere. A morality system. If there's, you know, if there's life of consequence involved, you know, in a in a sandbox game, like the, you know, it's all about the tools that you give to the players to create their own experiences, isn't it? So you know, you give you give them the tool and you create a consequence for using the tool, and you know, then you you then that's creating possibility space, isn't it? It's you know, it's creating things that players can do within <coughs> your game. It puts the lotion on the skin. <laughs> that definitely happened. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to go that far, you might as well dig a pit, <laughs> you know. Oh, my God, I'm so looking forward to the machinima for this game. I Don't know, have, right? It's going to be incredible. Yeah, the, the problem is is that your um, ogre skin is so tough, you would have to urine cure it. And that would, <laughs> I mean, it stinks bad enough as it is. Uh, but uh, to cure it with urine and salt. What about dark elf skin? Oh, that you can you can cure that with mayonnaise. It's very, yeah, it's very very soft. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next question from Esos twenty four. Do you believe that landmark is published this year? You mean that it will be? I'm guessing. Yeah. Do you believe landmark will be published this year? I'll, I'll paraphrase. It. Temporal temporal verbs are kind of important. Yeah, um, <laughs> you might not be um, an English native ling- English speaker. It's possible. As in, as in a, a full release before January the first. Uh, no, beta's coming. I don't. Win- winter is winter is coming. Mm-hmm. Beta is beta is coming. I'm sure we'll find out more about that very soon. But uh, the, I, the full game, I, I don't think, is going to be out before 2014. I don't either. Uh, Just my two cents. <laughs> All right. I don't, I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, where does Omid... This is from um, Midian. San where Diego. does Omid oh. buy his suits? And Omid's back, so maybe Omid can say, where do you buy your suits, Omid? You're very stylish GQ guy. As we wait. How can I answer yeah. that? Well, I get, get some online and uh, the rest from shops. Uh, <laughs> Gentleman's Warehouse. Surround. I'm going to love the way I look. Gentleman's Got this one warehouse. at Goodwill. Yeah. We'll, we'll see if he, write, if he answers Heavenly back. This, this jumper I got as, uh, uh, when, I, when I completed 10 years of service on the docks. Yeah. It was a proud day. My yellow shirt. I paid a lot of money for this. My, uh, my dad was there. He looked down at me. Put his hand on my shoulder and said, "I've always hated you," and he just pushed me into the sea. Yeah, I learned a valuable lesson that day. <laughs> Don't trust your dad. <laughs> yeah. Do we have another question? Yeah, we have, let's go to another question because um, 
because we're not we're, that one is, we're gonna wait for that one okay um from timeout band knuma 99 x2743 <laughs> open dungeons or instance which do you prefer lol oh open or instance oh god um i i really hope that they don't use instancing for dungeon type content um Hopefully, we we know uh, the the nature of a sandbox game means that you don't want people just running the same content over and over again to to sort of grind for it. We know that they're we know that they want a sort of contested content system where you know it's it's important to be the first people to get there. I think if they want exploration in a in a wide world, it, you know, it makes sense to have to go out and find things to do. You know, I think as long as the world is populated with enough meaningful content that is scaled to, you know, different levels of difficulty and different size of different sizes of groups, um, you know, hopefully, especially with Landmark as a, as a tool that they can use as well, hopefully, you know, there should be enough for everyone to do without having to resort to instance dungeon content, which I, I don't think that's going to be in there, is it? Instance? No, I don't. I don't. I've not heard of anything about instances yet. How about you, Trinity? Anything? No. So I, I think it's. It's part of the world. You know, in, instancing can be a useful tool for storytelling. I think you know, with EverQuest Next, possibly there might be some sort of quest chain with like you know. Uh, the main villain is something I've been thinking about a lot in this kind of sandbox environment if you want to tell a story but you want to have an open world that you explore and have contested content within you know is it possible to create a meaningful villain you know especially if if only one group ends up actually being able to take the villain out you know would that be a bit of an anticlimax for the people if you log in one day and they say oh yeah that other girl took them out you know, Red Guard found Yeah, I, I, I do see the point in that. The That part of the instancing I do like. Because otherwise, everybody mm. in the server could just fly up and, yeah. and attack the as thing. Long as, as long as it's story-based. I'm, I'm not talking about having, like, a top tier of raiding content that you mm -hmm. have to work towards. I'm just talking about, you know, in in a way to to deliver story. I think it, I think it can be it can be good. Legendary Hero <coughs> Toxin has a good point here. Instead of instances, procedural events Wait. would be better. <laughs> Stumble around and find random procedural encounters. Maybe something made by EQL and L user that will only be there till the boss is defeated. The group has been pushed away. So yeah, mm -hmm. those are good, and that's something new. Uh, be tri trigger events as well. Trigger could events, be, yeah, could be something quite interesting. Like if, you know, they, if you, that is confirmed. This is, I think, yeah, I think this is what is what is talking about. Where you know, if you if you do a certain thing in a certain area, you know, it, it, it triggers it triggers an encounter. That that could be quite cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, and it, that is a confirmed feature, the trigger events, because they did talk about if you're doing some event uh, and you're building the walls of Halas, and then all of a sudden the walls are built, like you something you did out in the world, either you brought enough wood back or you killed enough or orcs or whatever, that now the walls are up. So that that could definitely play out that way for the other thing too, for instance, for uh, dungeons. So would you then have to rely on? on phasing or does it mean that once you have brought back or enough people have brought back enough wood well, that for everybody events, sees that things it's are everybody gonna... yeah but yeah. it would be, it would well, be the way the rallying calls work isn't it you know once it once it um gets to a, a certain a certain success state like you know once it reaches like a tipping point then it moves on to the next sort of the next phase of the of the encounter but for everyone mm -hmm. it's just how rallying calls are but I was thinking, you know, maybe maybe just peppered throughout the world. I think, the, you know, it's, uh, Dave Georgeson likes to talk about it a lot as well. The idea that, you know, as you go out and you, you know, you interact with the world and you, you affect the world in very meaningful ways. And that can be, you know, mobs moving to a different area because they don't like where they are anymore. But I was thinking maybe you could you could end up with much more direct effects. You know, maybe maybe they could just be a well in a field and you go to the well and you know you're the first person to pull a bucket out of it and that disturbs a big monster that's at the bottom of the well and then decides to come out you know Eat your things face. like that things like that could be could be quite cool if it's possible all right next question 
Uh, should there be a global broker auction house, only local broker auction house, or no broker auction houses at all? We've talked about this quite a bit before, but we could talk. I mean, th this is from Gorda, Gordon Q. So maybe they're new to the show. But um, I, th I think it should be local auction houses that you can see what is available on the other auction houses, but you have to, have to actually have to travel to them. Mm -hmm. With a huge caravan full of stone that you want to sell there. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted, yeah, if say you're up in the northern area and you want to take stone down to the uh, southern area because they don't have any available down there, then um, you actually have to carry it. And when you get down there, you can sell it at a premium because that's how it works. And you have to. But then it's, it's it. a, yeah, but as as long as you know, as as long as it's a choice, you know, if it's if it's a choice to do that, if it's a choice of where you buy something or where where you sell something. And you know it's risk versus reward. It's you know the amount of effort versus how much you want it. Just now, like you know, what is the value of the item to you personally? Is your time more valuable to you than your currency? You know, it, it opens up a, a whole new, a whole new sort of web of decisions for the player. Opportunity cost, player agency having to move goods around the world as well. You know, it creates a lot of possibility space for you know emergent gameplay and sandboxes and lots of game designy type words. <laughs> I was actually going to say, and it, you know, then it, you know, it's it just it, it makes the world more of a world. It, you know, it makes it makes decisions important. I mm -hmm. think, especially yeah. in a sand, in a sandbox environment, you know, it makes it makes it important whether you travel somewhere or not. And I think that's so cool. <laughs> like, I just I just think that's that's great. Like having to make those decisions. Absolutely. When, when you mentioned, you know, having to cover all that distance and it gives a lot of opportunity for emergent, you know, gameplay. One of the first things I thought of was when I when I when I had first started looking into e, uh, EQ Next and everything, and and the concept of emergent AI came up. And that one of the very first questions I ever asked was, you know, what if you're, you know, doing this caravan where you're taking the stone or wood or whatever metal, what have you, from point A to point B, and there's like a party of ogres who ambush you and they take your stuff. Um, I've just suffered a cascade failure and forgotten where I was going with that particular <laughs> uh, thing. But then, so, that's it, though, isn't it? It's opportunity cost. It's right. risk versus oh, reward. Oh, that's what I was reward, yeah. Can I, can I then get it back off the ogres? Can right, can I you come back and kill that exact to tribe? To protect my caravan, you know. Will other um, players attack my caravan? which kind of feeds into the point that I finally remember what it was that I was going to say, is that you would have two options. One is the caravan actually moves through the game world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's the, every chance that you might get raided or uh, ambushed or whatever. The other option is you can hire an NPC caravan group to move it from point A to point B, and it's guaranteed to get there without the being raided. Right. <laughs> but... It takes time, and there is no here. Just give us some station cash, and it'll be there right now. And you know, we'll skip the whole you know pay to win, uh, you know, thing. Um, but you know, that was that was my thought. <laughs> that's perfect. That's fine. Yeah, right. I, th I think I think that's great. I think I think it'd be cool if you know the one that definitely got there was maybe slower than the one that right. existed within yeah, the world, yeah. or you know, maybe it cost more or something. This opportunity cost, I like. I do too. That's okay. Cool. That's a good idea. Next question. Um, how often is Locke confused for Cat Stevens? Mm. I've been in the in the last three days. I've I've been asked if I was uh, Muslim twice. Hmm. Well, the um, hat doesn't help. Or, you know, yeah. Well, I I haven't got a problem with that. I'm just saying. Saying that's 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 a thing that's happened to me this week. <laughs> normally, normally I respond, "No, I'm just homeless," and then they go away. <laughs> Wait, give me give me twenty quid. Come on. <laughs> just by strangers just walking up to me in the street and just asking me. In fact, one guy didn't walk up to me in the street. He walked in through the service entrance of the place that I worked uh, into into my kitchen with a bottle of Jack Daniels at eight o'clock in the morning to ask me. So you know, that's a little window into my world. <laughs> it's just a thing that happened. No, oh, uh, I guess uh, <laughs> Pen Domino Penipod just says, "Are we reading too much into this?" 
that there might be emergent AI on fish. Uh, <laughs> no comment, but this amused me. So she just <laughs> tweeted that out. Thanks, Panapod. Okay. Um, another question, question. Another question from Esos twenty four. Imagine AI for fish confirmed. Definitely, we have it confirmed from her mouth. Okay. <laughs> She said all of the words in a sentence. <laughs> uh, says, there are pets in EQN. What kind of role pets get, same as EverQuest? Um, we, ha we have no confirmation confirmation of classes. I'm sure there's going to be some sort of ranger hunter class with pets. I can almost guarantee that. That's a total class that I love to play. I will think that there's going to be necro pets. I mean, there's going to be necromancers. I want to see good old-fashioned Harryhausen bone statues walking around as... Uh, as pets, but uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, hopefully, uh, the whole range non combat little pets that follow you around. Um, oh, those are fun. Maybe, uh, maybe companion pets like other, you know, intelligent race NPCs that you could that could follow you around. You know, maybe we we're talking about the trading caravans. Maybe you could have a merchant that would actually, you know, follow you around in the world, <laughs> like in a in a non combat capacity. You know, or a squire or something. That, squire you know, would be for good. A, for a, a, a knight class or something. Yeah, have some sort of nobility. Um, there's, there's so many, so many interesting things that that you can do with, you know, pets and companions. But I'm, I'm sure there will, I'm sure there will be combat pets, and I would be, I would be amazed if there wasn't um, non-combat pets that they can put in the in the cash shop as well. Mm -hmm. And skins. That would be. That's yeah, a great so money maker. Like, and stuff as well, weren't there? So, right yeah. now, Sony, if you're listening, skins for your pets. So, That's like, you good. could have like, say, you got a, a tiger, you could have like a normal tiger, then they could sell like a like a moderately cool tiger, like a white tiger, and then they could mm -hmm. sell like a flaming white tiger, <laughs> and they could charge more money for that because that's more rare. And was and once then, owned by Siegfried and Roy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then they bid but, then, yeah. but then you make it possible to get all of those mounts through gameplay as well, whether yeah. that's you know, with a with a, a Plex system or whether it's just getting them in game. So like, if you buy one directly from the cash shop, you can go, no, no, I didn't didn't use the cash shop, didn't use the cash shop, got it in game. It, uh, yeah, because there is a problem with that um, because uh, in World of Warcraft they had the. Um, one mount that uh, the winged mount that was see through it looked like celestial yeah, stars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and hey, Total Biscuit did chew that one up. Didn't he call it the stupid pony or something like that? Sparkle, Sparkle pony. pony. Sparkle pony. Yeah, um, Sparkle. which you could earn in game, which almost nobody did, or you could pay twenty five dollars just buy it. Could you earn it in game? Yeah, there was a different version of it. It was like a gold was, one versus the. Uh, right, okay, I uh, thought that was the whole sort of controversy behind it. Uh, because the fact that you you just bought it, so as soon as you bought it, and as soon as you used it, people would be like, "You look like a you tool." Just bought that from the shop, like why? Yeah, you look like a tool. No, yeah, especially especially in that game where mounts are such a prestige item, you know, it's uh, it seems a little silly to me. Right, to go doing that sort of thing. Although, if you were just starting out and you had never played World of Warcraft, to buy a mount is probably not such a bad idea. I mean, at least gets you in the game and you can travel with it. Um. But now they're so cheap, I mean, for whatever. But yeah, um, so I can see that that would probably be a problem. So if they do have skins in the store, they should make them available as regular, or unless you want to be kind of called out as being a tool. But, you know, in a game like this, it's going to be free to play. Is it so wrong to support the game that way? Mm -hmm. You know? Oh yeah, that's that's absolutely absolutely what I think. Um, I think it's great spending money in cash shops, but there is a I think there is a certain amount of stigma attached to doing it at the same time. You know, there's there's a part of a player base in in every game that will look down on people who have who have you know just just bought things. You know, it's the hangover, of, it's the memory of the of right. the page in games, isn't it? Where people go, oh, you just bought that, you didn't, you didn't earn it, and then you go, shut up, I got it. I'll work fifty hours a week, I earn it. <laughs> you know, that was I mean? and Shattered Hope just brought something up in Guild Wars Two. You could explore and go find those pets in nature, and exploration is better than paying for stuff. The, the range of pets, yeah. Yeah, but now the but here's the thing, I got my entire um, Hall of Monuments done before the game came out, so I had all of these super rare pets that they gave us for the Hall of Monuments. Mm -hmm. But if you played PvP, you got those pets. The same exact pets that I had that we weren't allowed to have showed up in PvP. And so... Uh, 
balance. It was the balance. It was exactly why they did it. It was to balance it because my one pet that like shot out the sticky goo. Yeah, it was the spider, wasn't it? Yeah. Everyone got oh. Mm -hmm. No, no, Trendane. We're not, we're not going there yet. <laughs> you haven't had enough beer. But yes, so well, I, I can mm -hmm. see that they're, the prestige pets, they're definitely important. I think so. you know. I think it's it's good to have. It's the problem, isn't it, when you're discussing things that like it always comes down to. Well, it's good to have options. It's good to have a mix. Mm -hmm. but I think you know. I would I would love it if there was if there was an absolute metric ton of cosmetic stuff that was available through the cash shop. You know, not in like a, so it's not um, it's not a question of everything in the cash shop is like a tenner and they hope that people buy one thing a month. You know, maybe have those things as well, but also at the same time, ten cents, so loads and loads of skins. You know, with the player studio, like they do with um, mm -hmm. like they do Planet Side Two as well, loads and loads of stuff, player made things that's just like you know a couple of quid here and there. You know, I, I think would um, I would I would support that. I'd do both. Um, we were know, on this question for like stuff. twenty minutes now. All right, so moving on. Legendary Neurotoxin has a real question this time. Uh, should different moons produce different nights? Like, does a planet have multiple moons? So I th when I read that question, I was like, I think you might be thinking of Masar and Secunda, which is actually in Elder Scrolls. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it takes every ounce of effort I can muster to keep from mixing those two games up. And I don't know why. I keep almost asking questions about Elder Scrolls. It's like, no, wait. <laughs> wait, this isn't... A, never mind. Forgot I said anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I think... I, I don't know how many moons they've confirmed here. This is a Discworld, so how many does uh, Discworld have? One, right? Discworld's just got the one. Right. Where the, <laughs> where the dragons come from. That's where the dragons live, right? Yeah. And it, right. it's, it creates its own light as well. It's its own light source. That's right. It's a true story. You'll have to have don't, read don't all the different Terry about. Pratchett books that we're don't talking about. Me, uh, don't test me. Step to me. <laughs> Who played... Uh, no, never mind. Um, next question uh, from Mib Hero, Mubu, Mobu Hero. You're making these up. I, I am. <laughs> Mobu Hero. Amazing. During the day and night cycle, assuming AI will have a role, do you guys think the mobs will walk out of their ca caves or caverns, hideouts, or will they just pop spawn in the world? Uh, we Did we cover this? On another show, but yeah, we can cover it again real quick here. Um, I think that they're going to move. I mean, they're, they are going to pop in certain areas, but they're going to be more spawned, but not in the same way that you're talking about in other games. Like, there is no camp in the side of the road that always spawns ogres. Yeah, there's no there's no mob timer. It's not like, you know, it's not like spawn points where you kill one thing and then ten minutes later it pops back up again immediately. It's uh, not going to work in that way. As far as mob mo mobs moving around, that's definitely going to be a feature. I think after this round table question, I think, you know, it's it should be. It, I think it should be uh, something that happens anyway. You know, if they're if they're planning on having this kind of AI system, I just think it'd be so cool for people in cities to go to bed at night time, mm -hmm. and maybe even like different NPCs to come out in the city at night time. You know, for a, for a more night kind watch. of pocket vibe for the night watch to come out <laughs> in the red light district. Are you, are you seriously trying to test me on this, Domo? You think? <laughs> uh, have long bottom. I love the Night Watch as a book. I thought I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Any Pratchett fans in chat? Night Watch is amazing. Best books in the series, in my opinion. I wish they did more. Oh god, yeah. Just the character arc of mm -hmm. Vines is is glorious. It's a glorious thing to behold. It is. I guess Sorol is a Discworld. Sorol's <laughs> like Discworld. Yeah. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Right. Uh, says so small gods as well. That's that's beautiful. That is. Yeah, that's good. Okay, moving on. Did you? I'm sorry. Did you have anything to put in there, Trendane? I'm sorry. We're I skipped over. You look like a serial killer <laughs> sitting right right now. He's got like the hair, and he's like, <laughs> he's just got that face. Like I'm going to kill people when this show's over. <clears throat> All right. Uh, question from Knumama. Fishing, yes or no? Yes. Trendane, go. What is your thoughts on fishing? I, I am an absolute fishing whore. Um, 
my like, housemates, whenever we would all play WoW, because we all used to play WoW, mm -hmm. they would give me their, their logins and passwords, and I would do all their phishing for them. It's <laughs> relaxing, because right? Because I love it. Yeah. Uh, it is totally relaxing just to sit there, listen to the water playing in the game, have some music going, and just sit there and, and just mindlessly cast a fishing pole. It's like, um, it's like mining in EVE Online, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's one of those activities that you can do that is productive, but is like requires minimal input from you. And mm -hmm. I, I think systems like that are actually quite undervalued in MMOs because those are the times where you've you know you've got your hands free to talk in chat and engage in map chat or you know just in in guild chat or something. You know, uh, make plans with people, start up a conversation with you know with the person next to you on the lake. Or whatever you know, uh, go a bit silly, go for a swim, mm -hmm. maybe get a little, get a little frisky in the deep end. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. 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 <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. That's yeah, Dane's frisky I'm, face. I think, I think fi fishing specifically, I think is brilliant for that. I think yeah. you know, lots of secondary activities are cool. Maybe different ones like uh, trapping. Would be what about one. bow fishing? Trapping is cool. Too. Trapping would be cool. Uh, dynamite fishing. That'd be fun. It would be really cool to, to actually use some of the old trapping techniques, like actually show how you set up, rate, you know, because when the zombie apocalypse happens, we have to figure out exactly how to <laughs> go back to the old days, and, and we're forgetting all that yeah. stuff now. So to have some of those really old cool skills, and you could actually say, I learned how to do that in EverQuest Next. I learned how to s rig a trap. We are that alive we because of EverQuest Next. Yeah, when the zombie apocalypse happens and all of us are cut off from the internet. This is what we got. Hey, what? Next I Tuesday. I didn't sign You'll up. find out. You'll yeah. find out. <laughs> I've, I've just been stockpiling weapons for years. Mm, uh, just for fun. Or, yeah, just organizing a militia. You know, we're just, you know, going to take better, it by force. Better hurry, man. December 3rd. I mean, um, <laughs> next, next question. Next question. Okay. Seamus James. Does Locke always carry a knife and a bar of Irish Spring? Um... As a, is a machete a knife? According to Paul Hogan, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't always. I don't always carry a knife. That's I mean. not a knife. There's That's, a knife. Um, I also have a morning star that Ooh, I enjoy. A flail. Um, it is. It is. It is less practical, but um, I think the the sort of added the added frisson that it creates in uh, mm. in encounters. You know more than makes up for that. But you are a chef, so a, a flail like that is useful for tenderizing chicken. Absolutely, yeah. And ultimately, I think even though it, it is a very mechanical process, I, I like to consider myself as an artist, mm. um, a craftsman, if you will. Yes. So I, um, you know, like John Lennon said, I'm an artist. You give me a tuber, I'll get you something out of it. <laughs> but, well, what what was the question? I, uh, something <laughs> about I, Irish Spring. Do I always carry yeah. a knife? Uh, <laughs> And a bar of I spend I spend an inordinate amount of time um, holding large knives. Yes. See, you people think that we skip these questions. We read every single question you ask, <laughs> no matter how mundane. People. Or off the we go th we go through the chat log and add all the comments to your files afterwards <laughs> that we keep on EQ Nexus. Dumb question about Irish Spring and this guy. <laughs> all right, next one, Kron Rastaban. So I could, if you wanted a seasonal Ooh. weather system, if you want a seasonal weather system, should it mimic the real world or be accelerated? I, I think real world. Why not? I mean, that way you could do the, the seasonal holidays too. Like you could have when wintertime comes around, you start. We were talking about this before, you know. Wintertime comes, you start doing the seasonal stuff then, you know, harvest festival, all that stuff beforehand. And in the spring, the, the rabbit mating festival, and then all that other stuff throughout the year. I think it's great. Um, I, yeah, I think I think a seasonal thing would be amazing. Obviously, you know, there's going to be um, desert areas, more arid areas, you know, swamps, snowy mountains already. So there will be, you know, there is going to be a large variety of weather. But it would it would be interesting actually to see if if they could implement a, a seasonal weather thing, like how it would affect different parts of the world, mm -hmm. you know, different zones, if you like, different biomes, whatever you want to call them, you know, perhaps certain biomes could be affected to a greater or lesser extent um, by seasonal changes, you know, as, as it is as it is IRL. Yeah, uh, Shrouded Hope just says, let's do seasons by the British standards. Rain, 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 partly cloudy, and then rain. 
Wait, did it not rain? <laughs> 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 there was a, there was a time it didn't rain. Yeah, there was a partly cloudy. We had a so that's your we summer. Had a brutal, we had a brutal summer this year, actually. Apparently, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a snowy winter as well. It's just a little update from uh, <laughs> from over the UK, the, the western end of Europe. Isn't this internet thing fancy? Locke is all the way over in England. Trendane's all the way over in California, and I'm in New York. I'm between the two. Sandwich. There are oceans and deserts between us, but nothing could keep us apart. Absolutely. Next. Yeah, let's move on. All right. Uh, legendary neurotoxin. Should EQN use gendered class names such as sorcerer or sorceress? This this is a tricky subject, right? <clears throat> Should all wizards just be called wizards? All magicians, all magicians, just magicians. Should male characters be able to get pregnant? Think about it. We can try. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll give it. Try. We'll give it a damn good shot, eh? Hey, hey, I'll get bet. Oh, stiff upper right. lip and all that. Factor three sex riot. Um, should I? Is it bad that I don't care? No, you can not care. I mean, that's fine. Um, oh, Age of Wushu actually is quite interesting. There's a, there's a class that you can that you can only be as a as a female avatar, if I if I recall correctly, or you can only start as like a, a, a particular school, a particular school that only takes females, and I think there's another one that only takes that only takes the boys. But um, it could. It, it, well, I think it falls under the same argument as the race class restrictions that we've heard before. Do you think that you know perhaps if someone was starting, uh, if someone was starting a character and they they picked a male, but they had no way of knowing later on that there'd be a class that was only open to females to female avatars, you know they could probably get a bit annoyed about I that. I think they're I think they're kind of just asking about the um, no, just the names. Just oh, the name, think, yeah. yeah. I, I don't care. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's a I don't problem. Think it's that big of a deal. <laughs> I'm sorry. As, yeah, yeah, it's probably it's probably. Damn funny. it! I want to be called a sorceress. <laughs> <laughs> my whole life, my whole life's been building up to this moment. Gotcha. All right, uh, Alaska Winter nine two three inquiry. This is not a question. Uh, if we if every world would be different, how would how will world transfers be handled if some things are you own aren't revealed in the new world? Yeah, so that's that, there is a tricky thing there because they do say that you'll be able to hop from server to server, mm -hmm. and if on this server you've opened up Halas and on this server they haven't got around to that yet, it's no longer there, and if you have like a package you were supposed to pick up in Halas on this other server and on this server there's no Halas, how are you gonna get your package? Um, was was the sort of hopping from server to server just landmark, or is that confirmed for EverQuest next? It's as probably well? just landmark for right. I mean, right now all they really are talking about is landmark. So it is it is an interesting point um, in terms of changing servers because they you know people will identify certain servers as being the best servers. You know the the servers that 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 get stuff done. Mm -hmm. You know you know what I mean. Um, like uh, recently in in Guild Wars two um, the they did the new Tequattle fight, and you know certain servers, you know, uh, like just pulled in players from everywhere because they were the servers that you know were expected to to give it a good shot. Um, and it ended up like a lot of people that had been on the server since day one, you know, were actually locked out of the fight or were stuck in overflow and couldn't get in with their guild buddies right, because right. Of the people who had who had hopped in because you know they wanted to be part of that group, but it turned out the group wasn't there to begin with <laughs> because of all the newcomers. I think it's I think it's a difficult thing. Um, I think uh, server transfers should be possible, but you know whether there could be some sort of server locking system for overpopulated servers we'll have to we'll have to wait and see how the yeah, structure definitely have to wait and see for that one but i could see it causing lots of problems yeah will Trendane? that get worse the further it goes yeah, yeah. or, the, the or less they don't merge, so it's... because honestly <clears throat> the game is going to have a, a a ramp where it takes off and it'll probably drop i mean most of the, most of these games do and after a couple of years it might pick back up again i mean world of warcraft started out mildly okay and then it crashed completely and then it took right off about the time um, Burning Crusade came out most of the people I know I talked to who played for a while have only started playing during Burning Crusade they didn't play prior to that 
I'm one. What is that in your window behind you, Trindane? There's like some kind of alien looking at your window. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that's it's one of the weird. Halloween decorations. It scared the crap out of me. I just noticed Suction it cup to the window. It kind of looks like Morbo from <clears throat> from Futurama. It does. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on up. Uh, another one from Alaska Winter. Will town guards be killable? And will it have a level set depending on location or on beautiful forest as in EVE Online? Um, a set level. There are no levels. Mm. That's one thing. Yeah, but even so, we don't know yet. No idea if the town guards going to be killable. I mean, in EverQuest, you could, right? The first EverQuest. Mm -hmm. You could kill the guard. But they if, but they were pretty strong, badass mofos. Um, I would say that, yes, they should be. Um, but it should be very, very difficult. I mean, depending upon the, especially the larger the town. Mm -hmm. As the town gets bigger, the guard should become much more. You know, if it's just like a couple of huts, then you know it, it shouldn't be any more difficult to kill them than you know, a caravan. Yeah, NPC, so. yeah, right. But then, if it's like a major city, then you. Yeah. Like like Cuyanos, if you know you're Quino, going. Quanos. Yeah. I'm pur purposely mispronouncing it now because everyone keeps beating me up. Matter of yeah. fact. The S is silent. So oh, yeah. Quana. Quana. Quano. Um, it's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I think it comes down to how they want to police players in mm -hmm. the sandbox environment. You know, they've said already that there's going to be certain areas that aren't destructible at all. So yeah. there's areas that they want to be persistent and consistent. Uh, so I'd probably say that there will be areas where... I don't think you'd be able to kill them. You might be able to attack them still. Right, uh, me just told me it's a key gnos. <laughs> key gnos. Key gnos. So that's what I'm pronouncing it from now on. Key gnos. Key gnos. Well, key so the the problem is is that last time we did this show and, and he said that he said that yeah the the, the G is silent. It's like <laughs> gnosis. <laughs> but I say no, you don't pronounce I, the G. It's, I say gnosis. Right, uh, but you don't pronounce the G. You're not supposed to. It's not gnomes. pronounced gnosis. It's gnomes. It's gnosis. <laughs> and gnoki. Gnoki. All right. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to just rename the whole town Domo. Just forget the whole <laughs> gnosis thing. Kinos. All right. Welcome to Domoville. It's Domoville. Domo town. Uh, Blue Plane question. Hello, Blue Plane. Uh, do you think they will let people trade plots? I believe they will because they already said they were going to, right? Yeah, you can you can uh, give them to people. You can put them up for sale. You can just pick up Trade your flag, them. move off somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And it is a silent G in Geek Domo, so it's Eek Omo. Okay, next one is do, 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 do. boats, water, ocean, piracy, etc. Discuss. Uh, Assassin's Creed 4. Yes. I'm for it. Pirates. <laughs> I want to see pirates. I want to be able uh, to jump on somebody else's boat and steal their stuff. Mm -hmm. Pirates everywhere. Waterways, you know. Ponds. Uh, canals. <laughs> canals, yeah. ponds, rivers. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it's, another, it's another thing for people to do, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's another thing for... It's another... Another goal for people uh, to set themselves when they, you know, when they start the game, like what, like what do, what do I want to do? And that, you know, there'll be, there'll be some people that are like, I want to be a, I want to be a merchant trader and sail the seven seas, and that, and then because of that, there'll be other people that go, I want to steal their stuff, mm -hmm, and because mm -hmm. of that, there'll be people that's like, I want to, I want to fight the people that are stealing the other people's stuff to get stuff from them, and it's, it's uh, possibility space, I believe, is the phrase. But it's it's another it's another goal for people, isn't it? It's another option, and uh, I just I think it'd be cool. That is one thing we haven't really talked about. Can you build vehicles in this game? Like, can you build carts? Because if you can build a cart, you can build a boat. It'd be really neat to be able to build your own boat. Well, it's a whole it's a whole other avenue for crafting, isn't it? We talk about guild halls. Maybe you could build a, a guild galleon. Oh yeah, or a Viking. <laughs> Ship. You could pretty much <laughs> just practically take the mechanic from Vanguard because you could you could build boats in that. I mean, you had to bring together like three or four different, you know, um, 
crafting types because you had to have you know a woodworker you know mm -hmm. somebody who could build the thing you had to have a stonemason you had to have an outfitter who could make the sails and the ropes and everything um yeah it, it, could, was, it could be a real sort of they could be sort of real big ticket items yeah they should be for crafting that is like non-gear related uh, you know that i mean we talk about progression a lot when we talk about this game you know perhaps that could be something you know, state as a status symbol as well. You know, having a fancy ship that mm -hmm. could definitely be. Definitely and it should be. take a long time to build. Too. Yes, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks of real life time. Yeah, yeah. But you should be able to make like a a raft out of like tule reeds and paddle your way across a lake if you need to. If you have to, right? So yeah. that's easy to build, or or you know, and then going like all that. the way up to a. 32 gunner or whatever they that would rock I'm not, I'm not a nautical man with, with AK-47 sticking out of the sides you could do town, <laughs> sieging of towns and stuff it would be great alright so um, yes we'd think water and everything would be fun in this game alright so is that, well, the reason I'm skipping ahead is because the next question actually relates to that if enough people combine plots uh, think we'll be able to dig a river from ocean to a canyon and fill it up or, or with just a bunch of lava I tried doing this in Minecraft. I tried like connecting two bodies of water, and for whatever reason, as the water traveled through my little canal I made, it started dropping off mm -hmm. because I think it soaked into the ground. So you could there's probably. The, I know the way it works in Minecraft is there's there's source blocks mm -hmm. where like if you have a, a source water block, it will it will create yeah. water up to a certain distance. The same with lava, it will create it up to a certain distance. I think so far the answer for EverQuest is, is we, we still don't know. We, we haven't been told. The, the question's been asked about how liquids are going to work in, in the environment and we haven't heard anything. We haven't seen anything. Uh, you know, obviously people are very interested, but nothing yet. We'll Which to also see. touches on the question that I had. What's that? The, the other weather question that I was going to bring oh, up. okay. Mm -hmm. You want to ask that now, Trendane? Because if it's related, yeah, sure. sure. We, we we've touched on it from a couple of different angles. So, yeah. um, and it, it had to do with like the 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 water voxel thing that it would just and flow like we saw. Yeah. And what mm -hmm. I found if you if they put um, weather systems in place and you get a pretty bad rainstorm, you know, are there going to be like little micro water voxels that make up the the rain, and will they then begin to pool into ravines and cause a flash flood that's going to go right through the middle of a town? You know, and that and would rock. Yes, Think about griefing that way. As long so you as could, you weren't there, you could yes, build up some rock. thing on a hillside and let all the water and mud mix into it, and then you just open it up and let it crash to the town. Mm. And then does that open up opportunities for for damming rivers as well and creating creating reservoirs? In, in or st or starving a population center of, of vital water that they need. Turning the desert into farmable. It's easy. The town and go. Oh, we haven't got any water, and decide they want to move on somewhere. You turn, yeah, you could irrigate the desert and turn it into farmable land. <laughs> and, and then there's the fact that building a dam is not as easy as some people might think it is, because you either have to divert the water, build the dam, and then restore the original water's path, or you have to somehow either build the thing really damn fast before the water gets above and things starts pouring over the top. Yeah. That, that don't work, by the way. You know, or you have to leave a gap in the bottom for the water to continue to move out, and then you build the dam around it, and then at that last bit is plugging off that hole so that it starts to fill up and, and backfill. Um, but those can be very difficult. Diverting the course is the easiest way. Right. That. Very cool. I, I think it, it's interesting. It's probably something I'm going to try right away. I'm going to find a nice plot of land, and I'm going to dig a hole or a trench and see if I can. Divert the water. See what happens. No one has magic. <laughs> it would be good, you know. How how else are you gonna are you gonna build lava moats for your for your evil fortresses? Yeah, definitely lava moats <laughs> with lava crocodiles in them. Yeah, la lava crocs. Mm -hmm. They're dangerous. Are we, aren't those dragons? Yes. Don't get technical. They're so cute. I think the one on the poster, it just, it's adorable. Yes. You just want to squidge up his little face. Oh, my God. Unless he eats your face. No, he won't. All right. Long he question from Mr. Seamus James. Hey, Seamus. Will scripted rallying calls after the initial one at game release have to occur in a random order on a different server so that they don't become predictable? 
For example, server A completes halas before server B. Server A starts a new rallying call before server B is completed the first. Is server B going to feel like they were spoilered by seeing, I like that word, uh, by seeing what the second rallying call is on server A? Uh, I do know that they are going to um, make sort of those websites where this all, you could find this stuff out like Wowhead, kind of redundant because you won't need them anymore. Each server, it, the, what triggers them on one server is not going to trigger them on the other server. They, they did say that. But what do you guys think? Uh, yeah, uh, I forget which interview it was, but I know Dave Georgeson said that there were, you know, they, they had some interesting ideas of, of how to combat that. But as well, at the same time, you know, if, um, if different servers approach problems in different ways or if, you know, different servers have large prominent guilds that you know decide to focus on one particular activity and like tip the scales in a certain direction you know I, I think I think the idea is a rallying call isn't as linear as as some people might think I think that the, there's probably a lot of different success states for a rallying call when it starts out and mm -hmm. whichever one of those tips first is the sort of direction that it goes in but as well, I think that the rallying call as a whole will probably be a self-contained, a self-contained event, so that it doesn't keep branching indefinitely. Because you know, then that would just be insane. It'd be <laughs> impossible to to deal with from a development standpoint. But there right. will, the the way that I imagine it's going to work is that you will have the the one rallying call that will have different success states that trigger different events, and hopefully across you know across the different servers there'll be there'll be a few different outcomes and then when the next when the next one starts um hopefully they hopefully there'll be enough of a difference to impact the world in a certain way so that maybe different success states were more likely uh for the next one but they but did it's, say it's that really the triggers are going to be different I, I can't get my head around. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that they've got a lot of really interesting ideas, and just the nature of the game with the, the the sandbox environment, and you know the the way that the AI is going to work. I think, you know, for for the NPCs making decisions, for mobs making decisions. I think server to server, we could potentially see very different uh, very different environments, just you know, based on uh, the way that players act within them. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Trendane? Sorry, what? Hmm? Uh, <laughs> You're such a blonde tonight. I know. It's just, I don't know what happened. I was <laughs> trying to peroxide my hair, and I think I grabbed that toilet bowl cleaner thing instead. This is like the 2000 flushes, and look what it did. I mean, I split ends like crazy, and I just didn't know what to do. <gasps> uh, that doesn't quite answer the question, does it? No. Oh, uh, well. Um, I was actually going to say that that I I would expect well I would think that they would um, stagger them mm -hmm. across uh, different servers. Yeah, and I think they're going to at least not just, stagger them, but randomize. I can't, I can't imagine them sitting in a meeting and making that decision to be like the rallying call. It, it goes at its own pace and it takes this amount of time. No, or like it it completes when it completes. But then you know the next one just starts, and across all the different servers, it's always going to be the same one next. I just think, like, why? Do, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, because if if you're on one server and you just see what happens on another server, and there's always going to be like one server will just steamroll ahead, because everyone that everyone that is interested in doing that will all congregate on that server. And they'll all just like they'll steamroll these rallying calls to get them to the end, and they'll get but further, the, further, further ahead. And then there'll be quieter servers, and the, you know the the dedicated RP server that's always like the fun one where they just want they just want to <laughs> hang out and have a good time. Will be like you know they'll be so far behind because they'll all be in character, and they'll have like evil people trying to stop the good people from doing right, the right. Imagine, the, um, imagine imagine like being on the server that. You know, another server is like eight months ahead, and you you know exactly what's coming from the rallying calls for the next eight months. Is that just not? 
I don't think you're going to be they, server hopping. They, is, must, they must have a plan. They're to not going to let you server hop as, as easily as I think they're going to forever for land. So, like just just looking at that though, like going on the website and going, this happens and this happens and this happens. And this, oh well, that's that's that for the next six months. That you know. But if the got, triggers are random, then you know what the order might be different. Right, but what he's things. saying is is the dragon attacks Halas after they finish this building, and then this other thing happens. So then people are going to know, oh, God, the dragon's going to attack. So they're going to have yeah. to randomize the next thing that happens in line. So that maybe the which dragon... Is, which is what I meant. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. When I'm saying that they're staggered, I mean that they're... they're no. Completely randomized? Yeah, pretty much. That would be cool. Like if they have different events that are hooked together through some random skein. All right. Uh, <laughs> I just think even like what basically I was saying what I was saying before about a rallying call being a self-contained thing it, it, it can't be like that can it like it, it can't always end in the same way right mm -hmm. because that would just be that would just be lame for like a three or four month event you know to go through let's say you know one server just happens to hit a couple of triggers quickly and you know, then suddenly they're they're weeks ahead of the other servers, but yeah. the other servers can see exactly exactly what happens. Like that to me, well, it's going to be it's tricky. Not, it's not compelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, like it, it will be triggered. But I'm just saying, like if every if every server has the same the same rallying calls that w are working towards the same outcomes, it might I be done a little bit a little bit like uh, Mass Effect. Mm. You know, with the Mass Effect storyline. Um, yeah, but that's, with, with that though, it like you know it it, it branches to it branches, grow. Sense, yeah, then but it, it always it always comes back. Right. So that's and, what I'm saying. Uh, they might have to do that, but the branches are different enough on every server. But at some point, it comes back to a similar storyline arc yeah. that follows through. But you they know, do want each server to be kind of unique. Yeah, I imagine. I mean, with with such a long time frame for an event like this they they must have like a specific plan and i'm just wondering you know how how they could cope you know with the with the development cost for something like that you know if they're going to have if they're going to have a, a lot of different servers and they want the experience to be different on every server you know how how could they possibly i mean if even in a mass effect game you know they can't have the story branch in more than one direction, you know what other games are. There? You know, like in The Witcher Two, like you make a decision at the start and it goes one way and the other way. Right. But that's you know that's still only two arcs and that's like a that's a, a triple A single player title that you're not dealing with thousands and thousands of players across different servers all making different decisions and performing different activities it's at different mind rates. It really is. You know how can you, how can you possibly? make that then you know they're just creating the theme park problem for themselves aren't they because yeah. they'll have to create story and create content all right we gotta oh, move on I'm here so much about this i do apologize <laughs> okay two more questions and we're done okay uh from gordon q uh to each of you which is your favorite ca crafting profession go quickly easy easy what wild wild craft Wildcraft? Wildcraft or bushcraft. Taking anything that you find in nature, herbs, animal skins, oh. what have you, wood, making shit out of them. You know, that, that covers herbalism, leatherworking, you know, wildcraft. It doesn't really cover mining and blacksmithing and stuff, but herbalism and leatherworking and shit like that. Yeah. Native type skills. All right. Yep. Lock. Um, I like things like uh, things like enchanting and, and things like cooking and making potions that grant temporary buffs. I think that they're interesting. I like uh, I like blacksmithing. Um, in real life, I learned how to do chainmail and uh, do armor crafting that way. So I I like that. So I'd like to do that in the game too. All right, last question uh, from Legendary Neurotoxin. How should kill loot be distributed? Should everyone have to split the same pool of loot with need, greed, and all? Uh, should it automatically be split based on participation? Should everyone have their own unique loot? Quick answer. Oh, it's so difficult. <laughs> all right, trending. What well, you... uh, part of what we discussed before that I think it w could actually work very well is that mobs, especially big ones, don't drop loot. They drop components to make loot. Mm -hmm. And then everybody gets a share that's comparable to however much effort they put into, you know, the kill. Okay. Luck? 
Um, I like the idea of, of having to uh, sort of harvest loot off <laughs> drops. So like if you would you would have some sort of skill um, associated with with getting different uh, different items or materials um, off whatever it was that you killed. At the same time, I don't know whether you know people having individual loot or having communal loot would be more compelling in this system because uh, you know we we just don't know enough yet about the about how you know about how gear and loot and everything is is going to work. What mm-hmm. kind of drop rates we can drop rates that we can expect? But I think you know if you if you kill a wolf, it should have a wolf pelt on it, and it should have some teeth on it. Wolf eyes, maybe maybe some innards that that someone could use. You know that. I, I really the think they need to pick pick that up because that was the worst part about those other MMOs. You play a game and you had to go get four wolf teeth, and you'd kill twenty seven wolves to get four wolf teeth. You know that you could get, you didn't well, smash that, everyone's face that mad. <laughs> the the big thing about that though, isn't it? It's the it's the kind of Skinner box thing that they always go for, where they want you to feel like. That next mob is going to be the one oh, yeah, that yeah. drops, drops the, you know, the that drops the, the exotic. So or then the, make it something more rare. Make it, you know, infected you. wolf ovary or something like that. You know, <laughs> Where it's only, <laughs> how, how many wolves you have to kill to get one of those? Sure. Uh, yeah. Not only teeth, females. Right? Yeah. Teeth. Exactly. You got to find all the female wolves, and you got to find. Okay. All yeah, right. I, so. I, I the same. That's be cool. All right. So we are going to wrap up now. Uh, but the big secret. Do you want it? Do you want to say what it is? For those who are still sticking around, we can neither confirm or deny that within the next two weeks, we will be hearing some information about. Say it. Say it. <laughs> Beta. <laughs> for EverQuest Next Landmark. Beta. Beta. This is, this Over there in the, the official announcement of the possible announcement. That maybe in two weeks ish we'll be talking about the possibility of beta. maybe talking about landmark beta. We are reading the tea leaves, and everything that we can find points that something very, very soon within the next couple of weeks we will hear something solid. This says Omid is a vicious tease. Yeah, and and so we are <laughs> we're ratting him out right now and telling about ratting this. him out. Yeah, you know how he feels about the Ratanga. Oh, I know. So mm. I'm throwing it at him. <laughs> we are reading the wolf entrails. Says Gray. Ah, uh, hey. So yeah, it's, everybody. It's, very it's, soon. It yes, it's time to time to stoke the fire in the. So in get the your affairs in order. Train. Let's do it. Get your affairs in order. Buy yourselves the pens. Get yourself a urethral uh, catheter if you need one, um, and uh, hire somebody to clean your house. You might not even need that. Just somebody to clean the area around your desk where you're going to be sitting for two weeks, three weeks solid. Advice for life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> exactly. All right, everybody. So this is Geek Domo, Locke and Trendane saying thank you for being here tonight. Remember, everybody, uh, EverQuest Nexus is the premier forum for EverQuest Next. If you want to chat about all this stuff over there, come on over and uh, make sure you set up an account over there and you can chat with all of us. And we will be back next Friday. Same bat time, same bat channel. I know a lot of you are saying that you wish you knew when we're going to be doing this. We're going to try to do it every single Friday at this time so that make it more normal for everybody. Uh, if anything comes up, make sure you're following on Twitter and Facebook and all these other things. Uh, also, uh, the video will be available on um, myself, Locke, and Trendanes, and EverQuest Nexus uh, YouTube page. So you can watch them on any of our pages. And there will be, at least on my page, there will be annotations. You can click our faces and subscribe to our YouTube channels if you'd like. Okay. Awesome. No need to make it next week. Thank you. Be careless. Be careless. Until next time, see ya. Bye-bye.